know, you can't yeah. always change the past. Things just happen. Kind of like what we're going to talk about today here at Four's a Crowd. Four's <laughs> no, a group. Crowd. Four's a group. Four's, four's a group. Four's a group. <laughs> Unfortunately, if you were here with us last week, you know that we're missing one friend today. We yep. have a vigil here. Yes. His, his Our little candlelight, candlelight. vigil. <laughs> we are a group of guys. May he rest in peace. Yes. Tonight, knowing that he got all those packages wrapped and ready for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hope you're happy, Kara. Hope you have your cuddle time. Yeah, uh, better be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome back here. We've still got Tony. We've got Austin. What's we've got up? Chris Tell and him. myself, Cam. Um, and we decided we want to take a little trip through the past to discover some history that we may not know about. Yeah. We're going to do this blindly, right? So we oh, yeah. found an Ask Reddit question that basically is, what's the most effed up history you know about? Essentially, it's Tony gonna, found this. Yeah. It's going to be dark. So it is. fair warning, parental advisory, this is going to be a dark episode. Explicit so, content. Yes. Mostly yeah. probably just a heavy, like, sad, you know, historical content. But we'll welcome. try and spin it to make it more fun. We'll Hopefully. discuss. We'll see. Ugh. History's know. crazy. I actually love history. I'm quite a history buff. I believe you are too, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Like anyone, mm -hmm. you guys like history? I mean, I think as you get older, it just is natural to be curious well, about the past. because you lived in... <laughs> I find it... You lived in history. <laughs> right? I find it fascinating, but I don't explore it. I love like, it. I think so. it's I too. so fascinating. You can like, find a lot about psychology and all that. Just you, reading you history. You can see... It's weird. You can see the future looking in the past. Yeah. You can also see how smart people are to how far they've looked into the future mm -hmm. with certain things. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah dude. It's yeah. there's so much to find in the yep. past. And I mean there's so many good quotes like those who forget their past are doomed to repeat it. I 100% believe yes. that and I see it happening nowadays. Yes. Um but another one, this is another one that may may uh come to fruition tonight but the past or history. History is written by those who win. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's one thing that's crazy to think about. Like, there's a lot of stuff we don't know about history because we only hear it from the people who were victorious, the people who beat the others, the people who survived, the people and like, they can make up their own story. <clears throat> exactly. About, like, but the cool thing is, is they'll find documents that were from the other side that completely contradict, contradict it. Uh -huh. and, and then you start putting the pieces together where you meet in the middle and then you can actually figure out history yep. on your own time, like in certain degrees. It's cool. Interesting. Yeah, I love it. Especially like ancient warfare and stuff like that. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All that good stuff. So here, should I, how, how should I sort the comments on here? Do I think, do you think I should do best, top, new, controversial, old? <sighs> Contra I've, I've got it as top. Ooh, top no, top. I've got best comments. Ooh, we could do that or controversial. Oh, yeah. How, what, what marks something controversial in Reddit? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> when you put controversial, the very first one that pops up, COVID, Donald yeah. Trump oh. was elected president of the country. Really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, geez. OK, I get it. I get I understand now. I feel like because wasn't uh, Ronald Reagan was an actor, right? Yeah. Before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's kind of along those same lines. They like, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a governor. Jesse Ventura was a governor. Yeah, but that's because yeah. Schwarzenegger can't be the president. Well, I'm, my point he's is, is that he's not system. the first celebrity to go into oh, politics. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they usually do an all right job. So Reagan did great. Reagan was <laughs> awesome. But that's controversial, too. A lot of people <laughs> still hate him. <laughs> so so was. I, was, I was reading a couple that left a real heavy feeling. I don't know if we want to start this off. Give give it to us. Okay, this is let's just, let's just dive in. This History is can gonna be, scary, be like can't run from it. The deep, 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 deep end if we're diving we're in. We're diving in like oh, dang. we got our scuba gear on, we're gonna go dive. We'll swim to the okay. light. Okay. <laughs> I fair oxygen I've warned. Tank is on low. <laughs> it's titled The Baby Killing Tree. Oh what? my Gosh. We're, we're starting out with this, Tony. <laughs> I just warned. <laughs> wow. Very thick. You don't even like, like, let us warm up a little bit. Jeez. 
I did mean, I not give a was, warning? You, you did. You, you did? Like, just painted this picture. We're like, we got this. We got He's our like, scuba suits so, on air time. Yeah. We're ready. And coming <laughs> what is I'm this? So shocked. Coming it's from babies. <laughs> it's like jumping into the frigid cold and you're like, okay, I thought I was ready, but I'm clearly not ready. <laughs> but Tony's like... Hey, but are you <laughs> sure? So dark. I feel like I could be the darkest one at this table, and I'm warning you, this is dark. Oh gosh, I don't know if I can do this. It's just rip the band-aid off. Oh my gosh. Yep. Rip the band-aid off. <sighs> Way to ruin the night, Tony. During the Cambodian genocide, there was a designated tree which soldiers would beat babies against to kill them. Just pick them up by their feet and slam their heads on the tree. No way. I don't know how people could do that. I don't either. Like, legitimately. Like, I don't care. It's just innocence. You're just destroying so, innocence. So there was a comment point. on that. that somebody said, I stood... I stood in front of that tree and listened to the explanation on an audio guide describing the killing fields and what I was looking at. As a grown man, I'm not ashamed to say I cried my effing eyes out. I... No way. How do you, as a person, get to that, like, even in... Like, what would you be, brainwashed? Like, even if the president was like, I need you to go and do this and kill these kids. Like, there's no way I would do that. Dehumanized. You're you're not human at that point. It's a pure hatred for your enemy to the point where they're not even human anymore. But they're not even your enemy. What's a baby ever an enemy of anybody? Well, that's that's, that's just it. They're the mm -hmm. baby of your enemy, though. So, therefore, they're no longer a child. They're just part of your enemy. I can't draw that. I I just can't get comprehend that. Oh, I agree. Well, of course. Yeah, that's just crazy. And here's the problem, too, right? Like, when you are enlisted in the military, and granted, I'm not saying this is the U.S. military, but... Ooh, not even. But, like, uh, who, who, what, what did they say? You said Cambodia? Cambodia? Um, Does it say what year? No, it just said it said during the Cambodian genocide. It was like the, so whenever the Cambodian genocide the, was the guerrilla warfare and stuff when they were like, just trying to overthrow. When you're when some of these countries are enlisting kids, yeah. right? Child soldiers you're and stuff being like brainwashed, like you you basically become to a point where you don't have emotion, right? Like you'd almost you just oh. do what you're told and. Yeah. But I mean, even like here in the U.S. military, right? You're enlisting kids that are 18 years old. Yeah. And when you think mm-hmm. when you're 18, you think you're an adult. You think you know a lot, and then you turn like 25, and you're like, 18 year olds are stupid. Yep. Yeah. And then and you turn 30, and you're like, 25 year olds are stupid. Yeah. And then you turn 35, <laughs> and you say, and then I'm you're old. like, 30 <laughs> year olds are freaking stupid. You and know, it keeps on going. It just like yeah. you just learn and you grow and you prosper. But like my point being is you're not you don't have kids <clears throat> average till you're like 25. Right. Let, let's say that's an average number. Yeah, I think that's, that's a safe number. You know, yeah. like 18 years old, you're taught to kill a kid like you don't understand the true innocence of a baby or a kid. I think at 18, you're starting to get a grip of it though but you don't fully understand no, the innocence right. yeah you're like right. until you have your own until you have kid, your own child you're yeah. like wow that is innocence in its purest form yeah like mm-hmm. you, you then understand yeah. i think i started to get a grasp of it when i when my niece was born because she was the first baby <clears throat> that was like directly related to me Mm. And I think that's when it started to just like, oh my gosh, I have like a pure love for this person yeah. and I would die to protect them. See, I, my little sister, she just turned 22. So, I mean, you start to kind of, not to the degree you're talking about, but you do start to understand. Yeah. Like a baby is just a pure, like, I don't know. Man. They don't, they don't understand hatred. They don't understand you know, the, like jealousy, anything. greed. Yeah, they don't any understand anything. They're still they're so just like innocent. fresh out of heaven. <laughs> like yeah. they're they're just they're an angel. Well, I mean, yeah, in and body like, form. More so, what I'm getting at is like even outside uh, influence, right? You don't like even Micah. Like we're watching Lego Batman, and Lego Batman's like punching the Joker, and you're like, mm-hmm. that 
even as childish and as fun and as cute as that is, that's still diminishing her innocence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she's learning that violence is the it's answer funny. Mm-hmm. or that it's funny or, you know what I mean? But like, and it, it honestly, as a parent, it kind of makes you sad. Yeah. Cause you're like, you're watching these right. little things take away their innocence and it's just a part of being alive. It's a part of life. So yeah. I'm just, I can't mm. understand. Mm. So getting to that point, when do you guys think this happened? Uh, 1940. Oh, see, I pictured it being like, I thought it was like 70s, 80s, but I don't know. I don't know. 1978. Okay. 1978. Oh yeah. Yeah. This was, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so recent. Well, That's so like, like 1975 to 79. Well, here's the thing, too. Yeah, recent. We exactly. Live, we live in a free society where we understand that that's not okay. You go to some of these areas in other parts of the country, they don't they don't get well like that same. I pictured yeah. it during like, like just throwing out a number like Genghis Khan era. No, mm. exactly. Like that's what I had in my head. Yeah. You almost think of it long before America was around because because yeah. and honestly, and this this is what's so sad about so many people fighting against America and what we stand for is that when America was founded in, in 1776, when we fought against the British and we won, like, and we reestablished this, this constitution, it was revolutionary to the entire world. Nowhere else in the world worked like that. We're the longest lasting Republic is the thing. Cause exactly. Republics don't, they normally don't work out. And, and there's so many other countries who have taken steps and strides to becoming more and more free and having a a Republic and a constitution like America because of what America did. And so it makes you think like this kind of stuff wouldn't happen in a post American world (coughs) to where the, the world truly sees like, Oh, this is not right. Like this is not something we should be doing. But yeah, 1978 or 75 to 79, like, it's insane. Over 1.5 to 2 million people died in the whole Cambodian genocide. And I mean, Jeez. I think at that point, like to your point, it's just, it sounds so barbaric. Yes. Yeah, that it sounds like it would predate U.S. Like people history. wearing freaking leather and like yeah. animal skins. Like, yeah, exactly. Furs and, uh-huh. and you know, you're killing someone with a bone, like a hip bone. of Very a, pre-civilized society. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where it's still almost animalistic. <clears throat> Dang, that's crazy. Well, Jeez. and so the guy, the the people who led this Cambodian genocide, Pol, Pol Pot, I've never heard of him, but he's he was the he was a general. So let's, uh, let's see the Khmer Khmer Rouge. Jeez. It was given to the members of the Communist Party of Kampuche, or CPK, and they and. By extension to the regi- regime through which the CPK ruled Cambodia between 75 and 79. So again, this is a communist regi- regime ruled by this general called Pol Pot. And uh, apparently he was very close to Mao Zedong. And Mao, a lot of people don't really know this, but Mao is like one of the biggest like genocidal maniac dictators that the world has ever seen. Yeah, you don't learn that in history. Like, books. you always think of Hitler. You always think of um, Saddam, Soviet Union. Saddam oh, Hussein. Uh, or, uh, no. So oh, to the my nest. gosh, it does. What the freak? Oh, uh, Stalin. 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 Gosh, yeah. Um, you always <laughs> think of them, but, like, Mao, I think, has killed more than both of them. Really? Yeah. Jeez. You even have Mussolini, too. And Mussolini was up there with him. Like, it's yeah. that kind of group of psychos that, you know, just, like, literally had no care for human life. Like, I almost <coughs> look at them like, they're straight-up serial killers in power. Yeah. Jeez. Well, it's just, they con- didn't consider people people. They're an inconvenience to a degree. Mm-hmm. So. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Yeah. yeah, that's insane. Well, it's all uphill from here, friends. For, He's like, wait, is it? He's like, hold we on. We really hope so. I have a, I have another one that's, it's dark, not that dark, though. Okay. Um, when Mongols occasionally decided to kill the entire populations of cities, each Mongol soldier was required to kill a certain number of individuals 
And as proof, he had to cut off their ears and present them to his commanding officer. Also, they sent troops back to the city several days later to kill the people who were hiding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uh, his policy was wipe out, like if they were problematic, wipe out the entire population. mm -hmm. So they just, yeah. Dang. That kind of, like, <coughs> if, if this makes it light, I don't know. But it makes me think of Inglorious Bastards. How uh, the how Nazi killers. <laughs> yeah, right. How Brad Pitt's group, the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What were they called? Yeah, they were called the Inglorious Bastards. They would go in and he told all of his men that he wants his Nazi scalps. Yeah, yeah. scalps, yep. And I'm like, yeah, that's... Get me those scalps. <laughs> And yeah. I want my scalps. That's what it was, yeah. Uh, Taking off their ears. Dang. Oh, no. Right. I wonder how hard that is. Depends uh, on how sharp uh, the sword is. Ask Mike Tyson. It's true. He's a biter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god! Everybody had to plan to get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. That's true. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Um, Well, here's a weird, interesting fact Yeah Elephants were used in India to execute people Trample them Yeah Stomp on them Yeah For real Yeah, and it says This this traumatized the elephants Leading to one that was retired And would randomly kill people They did this by crushing people But could also crush slowly limb by limb I mean, you take the intelligence of an animal or of an elephant. um, I mean, honestly, it's like an elephant is one of the smartest species on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. They have a memory. And they have that memory and you're using them to kill these humans. Like I could see it slipping an elephant into depression and then to be that big. But with that intelligence to like crush you limb by limb. That's like you could think of it the same concept. It's just they get desensitized to it they just right. all right that's, just that's, doing my job that's the moment in the movie that you you always hope that the you elephant I mean? comes back and kills the guy that like made him do it like yeah. oh right. yeah that, you know that sweet karma i feel like elephants are just big sweethearts mm-hmm. i know that's not the case until they get punched in the face <laughs> until they get punched in the face then they're not so I don't friendly know. like I've, they seem Bull pretty elephant. they seem pretty like well, they go Loving. through a, they go through a rut cycle. You know, you know what that is. It's mm-hmm. where so like deer, elk, all that go through a rut cycle to where their body just gets saturated with testosterone and they become very aggressive. Mm. So bull elephants go Hello, through the same thing. Testy. Only they yeah, dang, big old testy <laughs> in that testosterone. Yeah, so they just get aggressive. That's crazy. Yeah, but like I always feel like elephants for whatever reason befriend humans. I don't know if that's really the case because. Every time, like, you're always here, like, stay away from the elephants, but I feel like... Those are the stories they tell you, not the ones that the big old boy pissed off at. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Coming at you and that's taking true. you out. That's true. The trucks, you ever see that oh, one? Dude, where they like, take you out, yeah. yeah. Here's, here's a, li- a lighter, kind of a lighter one. Love from Good. a distance. <laughs> this is an interesting one. In ancient Rome, there was said to be a glassmaker who invented a type of glass that was flexible and unbreakable. He demonstrated the properties to Emperor Tiberius Caesar... After demonstrating the properties of his invention, Caesar, thoroughly impressed, asked if he was the only one who knew how to make it. The man replied yes and was swiftly executed because Tiberius Caesar was afraid that the unbreakable glass would be worth more than gold. Oh. Mm. Now, honestly, like, I, I could genuinely see this being true, being real. And... I can see it still happening this day and age. Like I remember years ago, there was a conspiracy theory about a wa- a water powered vehicle. Yeah, yeah, that could run off. Like the engine could use water. It's hydrogen powered, or it's separate. I, it separate yeah. the was hydrogen it? from the yeah. water. Yeah, because I mean that's a thing. People have hydrogen cars, but it was like it was but not different to the degree that they had this. Yeah, one. it was yeah. different into the way where you legit could just put water into it and this engine would run. Yeah, and the only thing that would come out of your exhaust is. <laughs> Water. Yeah. yeah. Like like steam. Mist. Yeah. And it wasn't a steam engine or anything. Yeah. And supposedly that guy disappeared. Well, Cold Fusion, too, was supposedly a conspiracy that was around. So. Hmm. Like, unfortunately, like, there's so many things 
that could like who knows how many things could progress human society exponentially that just disappear because people don't want to lose money right or, like, you know <laughs> like you dolphins know. with lasers on there. <laughs> 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 oh, Dude, it's just can you imagine a flexible glass nowadays on a cell phone they uh, they i think they, they have, have it, it. Yeah, but they yeah. not this way. Yeah, unbreakable. Way. Like, how many phones say they're unbreakable and then they always break? But the technology now, maybe it's breakable now, but it wasn't back then. But That's where would we be today had that yes. been a exactly where would have progressed today? Right. Imagine yeah. like, uh, like a phone that would never break. There'd be no reason for an insurance policy on it. That makes me <laughs> uncomfortably sad when I think about stuff like that because you're just like, yeah, where would where would it's we like, be? <laughs> I don't know why my brain went here, but it's like those, uh, what gum was it? Orbit or whatever, where it's mm-hmm. like the ridiculously long lasting and they would have someone come in and punch them in the stomach or something to spit it out because yeah. Yeah. there'd be no reason to get a new piece of gum. <laughs> like it's yeah. the same thing. No, exactly. <laughs> like people don't want the world to, to progress. They want to have to keep selling you stuff. Well, well it's like they want funds. it to progress, but at a... Uh, at a financial level yeah. to where they can like, financially yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. benefit from what's it. it called engineered obsolescence yeah yeah so and like i think i mean there's a lot to that i think hmm. mm. yeah i i hate buying quote unquote nice things yeah because it feels like the more money you spend it's almost like the faster it breaks except for jeans <laughs> right. Je- <laughs> jeans last <laughs> if but you that, spend yeah. a good amount on jeans they're lasting forever you, by your choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I get it. It's like vehicles now. They say that, you know, they make parts to fail. Just, yeah. Or yeah, any kind of electronic. Like I think of like a microwave. I can't tell you how, like when we first started out, we would buy the cheap microwaves and they would die and everything. And it's like, man, I had the same microwave the entire 19 years of growing up. Mm. And then all of a sudden the microwaves now, it's like it lasts maybe five years and then you're getting a new one. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we live in a throwaway society as well. Like yeah. people don't take the time to figure out what's wrong, fix it. Right. Even I don't think like even mechanics nowadays are just they're just glorified part changers. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't they yeah. don't you have to find a really good mechanic who actually can diagnose and figure it out. Other ones are like, "Well, so change this thing out." YouTube video. Okay. <laughs> Nailed that it. That didn't work. <laughs> oh, number 2. You know what I mean? If this doesn't work, look here. (laughs) Not to say anything bad about mechanics. I'm just saying Mm. nowadays they're taught to change parts out. Just change them out. Mm -hmm. But then I got told, too, they said if they actually made a car that would last as long as the older cars did, it'd be ridiculous amount of money to make the quality parts and everything. But why? Like when we progress in technology, it's usually to make that stuff cheaper and easier to build. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be theoretically I, I easier it. to make a, a car nowadays that could outlast old cars. I agree. For cheaper. But we also think logically and for the best interest, not for <laughs> not for the I profits mean, and gains. Is it profits and gains? So that big old like that saying they they don't make it like they used to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Do you think that's true, or do you think that? our technology has progressed to an age where it's so complex yeah. that it can't last as long. Well, it's just like the mattress. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Just so like, like, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Like a naturally aspirated car mm-hmm. versus, you know, a twin turbo V8, blah, 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 you know, or I mean, I mean, I feel like battery cars will get to that age because there's a lot less moving parts. But when you get to these, like, pri- like easiest one I can think of is my coffee maker. Okay. Right. You can go buy a Mr. Coffee, 30 bucks. That thing will last you 10 years. Yeah. But you go buy one of the fancy coffee makers that we have. It has all these bells and whistles and options. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, two, three years, it's starting to break down. Things aren't working like it used to. Is it because... There's so much more options and things that could potentially go wrong versus just like... Like it burns it out quicker because Mm -hmm. there's a cost to comfort and convenience. Or there's like... like, Options. You know, the weakest link or the weakest part of the chain is the weakest link, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like what part of all these moving pieces is going to break? The chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So, so fix the weak link. <laughs> I know, but you, so you see what I mean? I get, I, yeah. When like, there's true. more links in the chain. So I think, it, I think it's like, more so an issue of sacrificing quality for convenience. And comfort. Because you can't, like, let's say... Or fancy. You were to put those two coffee makers next to each other. You want them to fit in fairly the same space. Yeah. And so in order to get all the bells and whistles and the fancier one that you get in the, that you don't get in the Mr. Coffee, you have to dig out some of its crucial pieces. I see you know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're getting at. So like you're, you're weakening its structure to add more stuff to it. Yeah. And cutting more corners to fit more convenient things in it. Hmm. Yeah. Like, Interesting. Okay, but with game consoles, why are they still on a disc? They're not. They aren't? No. Well, I mean, they are, but like they're, they're pushing state, more though? towards. Oh, yeah, they have solid state hard drives yeah. or solid state drives. I don't know. Nothing. But you can you, you could tell they're going towards phasing out discs. They're trying to go to just digital content. Yeah. I mean, I don't even buy discs anymore. It's all digital downloads. Oh, yeah. I, I still prefer. get old with that because I like having a copy of it. Because, but I know they save it. Like if you, you ever. You say that. But man, it's so convenient when you're like, ah, I'm done with this game. Bink. And then switch. Instead of having to change super, out. And it's fast. <laughs> oh. I, I'm witness firsthand with movies. I oh, loved yeah. my DVD collection and being able to look at it all right there in the shelves. But then as soon as I got internet and access to all those streaming services and to just jump around and yep. like, uh, it's take the plus room. It's yeah. amazing, yep. dude. You know what makes me mad, though, <clears throat> is they cost the same still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do cost the so same. So that's the part that annoys me. Still like, 20 you're, bucks. You're, but you're paying for the work that they put into yeah. creating it. I mean, so then what happened before? Well, a disc wasn't much for them to use anyway. I mean, yeah, discs but the are prices ch- are the same. I get that. So what do you well, want why? to take them 10 cents off or something? No, take at least like a $5 off. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're going that route, it probably costs them more money to have a server to be able to digitally download it. Than it does to have a burning station. Yeah. I don't know. Listen to him. Because they can power their servers <laughs> by their, I mean, Apple his. powers all of its, its iCloud servers by I mean, uh, here's the other thing the to sun. consider. When was the last time you saw a price hike in video games? The, when the new consoles came out. How much are the new games? 10 bucks more. They're 70 bucks? Yeah. On, on PlayStation That's 5? That's called inflation. Yeah. Oh, see, on Xbox, I haven't paid more than 60 Think, yeah, yeah, they're up to. But I mean, like, like the 60 new PlayStation bucks, Five games are like seventy bucks. Sixty bucks ten years ago, twenty years ago, still mm-hmm. buy you just a game. So Dude, freaking Super Nintendo games were like forty, fifty dollars. That's what still. I'm getting at. Is like the pricing of games has stayed relatively the same. I guess that's true. But also, to go even further into the future, they've got now Stadia. They've got uh, it was Azure. What is it that Microsoft's rolling out? It's all done no, on their Microsoft Azure is, platform. Microsoft is, or it's just their like Xbox Cloud. Yeah, X X Cloud, I think. Uh, Game Pass. Well, no, Game Pass yeah, has yeah, it you're in right, there. you're right, you're right. But it's either just, way, yeah. the idea is even with like some of the older consoles, like the Xbox One, you're not even going to need a game. You're not even going to need to be yeah. able to download it. All you're going to need is an internet connection. And this yeah. one's wild to me is because they're <laughs> running the game on their own graphics processing units. Huh? Yeah. And you're just streaming it. Yeah. So they're fast. So you'll be like, it's almost like watching a YouTube game or a YouTube show. Huh. But playing it, controlling it. And you'll be playing it. So it's almost like future proofed, even older consoles. So would it be laggy though if you don't have the best internet connection? Mm-hmm. They, yeah. No. They just degrade your quality. So instead I, of running 4K 60, though. you'd be running 1080 at 30 or so 20. So just yeah. like hooks to a smart TV? I think it, it really does depend on your internet because you could get to a point where it is like it can't dumb down the, the resolution anymore and so you'll start to feel lag or something. Right. Or, or every once in a while you'll get a little like stutter. So could you, can you download if you choose to? <laughs> uh, or is no, it well, because the idea you is you're not playing on a console. I can play on my phone right now. Console mm. games. Yeah, me too. That. I can even like on my computer over there. I could play games from my Xbox. Yeah, huh. I could. I could tap into my actual PlayStation right now. That's a technology. Laptop. Technology's right. awesome, but yeah, I mean, wild. like, it's awesome. But yeah, yeah. So bringing us back, this one kind of made me laugh. It just simply said, "Burrowing rat torture." 
how I know then, this. So hold come. up. Is that where they like bury you with a bunch of rats? No, no, no. no. The, the the this comment here will will tell you what it is. Too fast, too furious. Yeah. The part when they put the rat on the guy's belly and then the bucket over it. Put the bucket. Somebody's oh. putting sheet on the bucket. Something. Somebody's speaking Russian in this one, huh? Is that what it is? Isn't he like speaking Russian? What the Russians developed that, didn't they? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't but be in, surprised. In Too Fast, Too Furious, it's just the thug, oh, the I bad guy yeah. that's in that. Where you just torch the yeah bucket. But yeah, you put a bucket over it. Yeah. Put the rat inside the bucket. Put it face down on top of the guy. Start heating the bucket, and the rat has nowhere to go but down. And it, it'll start chewing through the guy. No way. I forgot all about that. Yeah. That scene, anyway. Right. That's crazy. That's a real thing? That's a real thing. Mm. I thought that was pretty gnarly. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Did you look it up? No, just, no, I've already seen oh. that. Bef- I've <clears throat> I've seen that before. <laughs> You've seen video? Just movies. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and then let my mind do the rest. Speaking like, of I don't the, need to see it. I'm okay. Speaking of the mind doing the rest, in that scene in Too Fast, Too Furious, the way the guy's screaming and everything, you're expecting when the bucket comes up for him to just be not upon and all girl and he's just got a few like scratches yeah. you're like really he was tickling you yeah, it was yeah. In, his, in his mind like uh, my cat has done more damage to me for real as soon as that thing starts to bite though i think i oh, would be I'm sure it would too. hurt i'm not doubting it i just now i gotta get a series of rabies shots <laughs> yeah you don't know what it's got so listen to this wild historical story all right in early 1500s there was a guy named georgi doza he ended up leading a peasant revolt in the hungry Romanian region. When he was finally captured, he was killed in a very unique fashion, or rather horrible. In order to mock his hopes of being king, he was forced to sit on a red-hot iron throne, wear a red-hot iron crown, and hold a red-hot iron scepter. Then, as he was being burned alive by his red-hot regalia, they march in nine of his revolt leaders. They had been starved for days, leading them... In, leading them in was Georgie's younger brother. The younger brother was cut in half before Georgie and his remaining prisoners. And while you're sorry, cut in half before Georgie and the remaining prisoners watched as they took red hot pliers and began to pull strips of his flesh off. <gasps> the remaining prisoners were then told to go to Georgie and start to eat him where they had removed the flesh. Georgie eventually died from this torture, and the peasant prisoners who had ate parts of him were allowed to leave. Oh, good gosh. Brutal. I can say we've come a, a pretty long way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is, like, the torturous yeah. things they did yeah. in the past are just insane. So I gotta, I gotta throw out the question. Talking about not, a petty girlfriend. <laughs> so not not maybe not like cannibalistic like that, but some of those ancient tortures similar to that. If we were to have stuff like that today, uh, you know, throw aside inhumane, all that kind of <clears throat> stuff. If we were to have those, do you think crime would be different? I think crime would be almost non-existent. Right? No, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always wondered that. Or they'd match the hatch and become just as brutal. Just because, uh, I mean, we do have know. the death penalty. Yeah. But yeah, it's but not it, like a brutal I death. was going to say, the death penalty is for, I don't know. It's a it's a long-term nap. <laughs> I guess yeah. you were saying, like, like is, is it enough of a deterrent? Right. Knowing that you could be eaten alive. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That that does remind me of I one. I mean, I wouldn't want to do whatever caused the that, eating. Yeah. <laughs> that, I can't remember what country or what who did it, but um, that reminds me of the torture where they put the prisoners inside the bowl. Do you remember this? So it's like a it's like a metal bowl, like the animal. Oh yeah, yeah. and yes. um, and then it's got the pipes leading out the mouth of the bowl, and then they would they'd trap them in there. And start a fire underneath it. So it's slowly cooking the person mm-hmm. inside the bowl. And then their screams and stuff inside yeah. the bowl would resonate through the pipes and come out like a screaming bowl. Yeah. You're thinking of that movie with Henry Cavill. Immortals. Immortals, yeah. But that's a true fact, though. That no, was exactly. a real thing. Yeah, and they basically cook them alive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's what that kind of reminded mm-hmm. me of. 
They used to be brutal. What? They draw string and quarter people. Yeah. Have you seen that? Uh, what's mm-hmm. that? They take four horses, tie your oh, hands yeah. to each tie a hand to each horse and a leg, and then they just slowly spread, make the horses go apart, and they just rip out your arms and your joints and your rip you to pieces. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. And so Holy crap. sometimes they go a step further and they get it to where things were breaking, but then bring you back together. And then they hold you and they slice open your stomach and rip out your stu- your intestines and let them just hang there and let you die that way. Yeah, like William Wallace. Yeah. They made him disembowel. Or they disemboweled him alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's another interesting fact, though. So this person was like, it's also possible that they didn't kill him in this fashion, but told people they did to scare the lower classes I, into not revolting. That is so funny, dude. I was just going to say mm-hmm. that we should... As a country, have someone say that, like, all right, now we're going to be doing capital punishment and, you know, you're going to get what you get and then do like a CGI of like, you yeah, know, like that's the thing, like it's a like, fake torture yeah, to scare the living daylights out of people, not really do anything, but make it look like super legit. Yeah. Well, and you got to think, too, like way back then, they have no way of fact checking anything. No. Yeah, let me hop on the Googles. Nah, we just slit his throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm just hanging with you. He tripped and fell down the stairs. I mean, that's a lot of stuff to go through, right? You had to fabricate a chair, a, a crown, a scepter, you know, you gotta heat it all up. Got heat all up. Like that's, that's a lot, lot of, of stuff to of fire to fabricate to just to kill too. one guy. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. Of, I mean, if this guy wasn't that important, I mean, they sure blow torches. Off. So you have to. Light a fire under the throne. Watch, they couldn't actually keep it hot. Like they couldn't get the, keep the fires going, so they he just pretended like it hurt. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm just kidding, guys. Like, he's like Mr. Deeds. Boy, what are those fires for? Hold up, hold up. What are we doing? Oh man, that That's smelled crazy. like ribeye steak. I came across one that was it involved babies again, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> We're done with that. Yeah, no more babies. Here's one, though. I love babies. In the 18th century, there was a sociolite, Med- Madame LaLaurie, who lived in New Orleans. She whipped her slaves, gouged their eyes out, and poked holes in their skulls, leaving maggots to infest the openings. She would also break the bones of her slaves and let them heal incorrectly to form weirdly shaped bodies. She was basically one of the worst murderers in history. She would also open the heads of her slaves and mix their brains around. Unfortunately, she was able to escape her town and the slaves never got proper justice. What? Dang. Dang. That sounds like a crazy, like, horror film. I feel like somebody like that, you know, assuming this is accurate and she really escaped and everything, karma is going to come back and get her hard. Wait, how long ago did this happen? It just said the 18th century. Oh, so she's long gone. Yeah, Yeah. but I I mean, but I'm just saying karma in some way or another, whether on this life or the next, like. Yeek. Hey, Cam, I got one I want you to look up. Okay. Look up F. Nestle. Ah. So while he looks that up, here's that bowl I was just talking about. The the Brazen Bowl was created as a horrifying torture device to roast humans alive. The bowl was designed for the tyrant Phalaris by his sculptor... Paralaus. Crazy. I don't know. So was that you said that was on Immortals? Is that that new uh, one that came out? No, no it, it's, it's like a little one bit of older. Henry Cavill's like first big movies. I've never seen. It's that. a really good one. Eternals like is the one you're thinking. Eternals. Of. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's yeah. a Marvel no, movie. Mor- I'm Immortals sure is like Greek mythology. Oh, it's kind of right it. along the lines of like Troy <laughs> and okay. that type of thing. I have to see it. So, so it's really he's good. like a demigod and has to like who does he. Who's the character he portrays? It's not. It's, with it's the, not Perseus. That one was. No, from the, yeah, it's. But he's got the bow. I have to see it. And he uses the spear too. Uh, but yeah, it's it's, it's a so good one. Good. It's I like really that good. One a lot. Mm. That Luke Evans who uh, played like Dracula and Dracula and told he plays Zeus in it. Mm. I have to but check it it's out. It's really good. 
You, did you find what I was telling you to look up? Yeah, so I'm trying to read into it. So they're trying to, they were trying to boycott Nestle in the 1970s. Yeah. And it's because through acquisitions, Nestle is now the largest seller of dietary supplements in the world, in the United States. Well, They look own up, like a <clears throat> buttload of companies. Look up, uh, look up the bad stuff that Nestle has done. It's crazy. I was trying to tell Tony some of this before we, before you guys showed up. Hmm. You know what's <laughs> wild about some of this stuff? Like looking at all the things that Nestle owns, whatever happened, I remember being taught extensively in school about <clears throat> monopolies and how they're illegal. Yeah. Yeah. And dude. I'm like, then how is it okay that they own like uh, hundreds of companies? Yeah. Well, it's the, what do they call that? The illusion of choice. Uh huh. Where they own competing All the brands. choices. Yeah. Yeah. They, you're like, oh, I'm not, I don't like Frito. I'm going to buy, you know, Doritos. It's like, aha, gotcha. We own both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha, B. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you want to paraphrase on it? On the well, Nestle thing? Yeah. So there's a story, and I, and this is the one I'm wanting Cam to look up because I'm going to butcher it big time, but there's something that Nestle did with uh, uh, formula to a, a little, uh, like a place in Africa. It's crazy. Like there's there's a lot of shady stuff that Nestle has done in general, but this was like one of the worst stories that I Infant heard. formula scandal. Yeah, this one's crazy. Outrage started in the 1970s when Nestle was accused of getting third world mothers hooked on formula, which is less healthy and more expensive than breast milk. The allegations led to hearings in the Senate of the World Health Organization, resulting in a new set of marketing rules. The baby killer blew the lid off the formula industry in 1974. Social rights groups began dragging the industry's exploitative practices in the spotlight. Let me see what they actually did. So that's the one where they used talc powder or something like that. In poverty-stricken cities in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, babies are dying because their mothers bottle feed them with the Western-style infant milk. Um, Nestle accomplished this in three ways, creating a need where none existed, convincing consumers the products were indispensable, linking products with the most desirable and unattainable concepts, then giving a sample. Yeah, so basically what happened is in all these third world countries at the time, Nestle was giving out formula mm-hmm. for parents and, and newborn and newborn mothers to give to their kids um, in place of breast milk because they were told that it was more nutritious, mm. more it, like it would benefit their kids further, and basically just pulled the rug out from under them and stopped sending them formula. Well, in that time span, the breast milk would dry up in the mother, mm-hmm. and then they had nothing to feed their kids with. So their kids just slowly died. And it huh. led to like thousands of deaths. That's crazy. And Nestle just like swept it under the rug. It's That's crazy, so dude. That's like it's maddening. Yeah, hospitals were also accused of pushing mothers to formulas at the time. Cause yeah, they were trying to push formula and trying to get a world worldwide spread and all this stuff like in third worlds, women would try to save money by diluting the formula. Yeah. Oh jeez. So it was so you got malnourished Marketing kids even. Boy. Uh-huh. Or they or they just got rid of it just because? I, I don't I can't like I said I I would butcher it because I heard this story years ago, but it was like So yeah, basically it was it was through all this marketing. So all the marketing of of basically claiming that it was better than breast milk and giving out all these free samples and getting them hooked on these free samples would do exactly what he said. It would like a woman's body, when they stop breastfeeding, it stops producing milk. Like yeah. it only produces as much milk as the child is trying to get. Yep. And it stays consistent until the baby stops. You know, you start weaning them, weaning them off. So because they were getting all this this stuff, in a third world country, you're more concerned about nutrition. Mm. And where if the mom's malnourished and there you're, there's this promise of, oh, your child will be fine if it takes this, you know, formula. Of course, they're going to lean to that. And so, yeah, it left them up a creek without a paddle because now they can't provide food for their child other than this formula that they have to buy but it's expensive, so they're taking the already less nutritious formula and diluting it further. And and it's only 
and, and all of it is because Nestle basically stopped them from breastfeeding, so they all dried up. Huh. And that messed up. That's crazy. Yeah. And they didn't even try and to, There's like, no repercussion. It. Yeah. So yeah. jacked up, dude. Nasty. The sad thing is, is that there's still no repercussion. Like, this is fact. This is yeah. right there, this plain to see, and yet the company's mm-hmm. still nothing. And we've never heard of it. Until right. now. Yeah. Well, it, like, I didn't know anything like this. So, no. I mean, to get kind of... Like, I think of... Like, I hate to reference pop culture in this, but... um uh, the example that kind of comes to my head is a few years back, Kevin Hart was asked <coughs> to host the Oscars. Yeah. But they, before he could, he had to apologize for something that he said years ago. And he's like, no, he's like, that's in the past. I said it, I did it, whatever. I'm not doing it. And so therefore they were like, okay, then you're not hosting the Oscars. And he's like, fine. And it's like something like that. It's like, hey, we want you to do this, but we want you to apologize for something you did in the past. What about this? You killed thousands of babies. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's just like, oh, it's okay because your chocolate's fantastic. Like, And it's not even that great, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not. There's no Swedish chocolate. There's yeah. no, I mean, no Iceland Icelandic sh- chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yum. No, but for real, and like, think of, think of it though. Like, a lot of people look, a lot of people look to celebrities for their inspiration inspiration or like this is what i should do this is guidance. how i should live my life their guidance yeah. right which i mean i'm sorry i think is the stupidest thing ever like celebrities don't know jack like they know how to act that is what they're good at they right. don't know how to tell me how to raise my family or what to do yeah prime example look at us yeah do we know what we're talking about no, no. we don't no we don't <laughs> what is here mumbling does that stop us from talking no it doesn't no it doesn't and we're filling your brains with garbage <laughs> we're here for entertainment <laughs> exactly unless you're Ashton Kutcher he has a pretty cool does he do stuff still yeah yeah he's a great guy yeah oh yeah he's been doing a lot of stuff in congress about trafficking and all yeah, that child, yeah. child yeah. sex trafficking Which, okay God. so so case in point though so a lot of these big corporations will use famous people to push their agenda, to push their yeah. their garbage, essentially. I want to be like Mike. Yeah. yeah. And these and these actors and actresses, they'll do it. Yeah. Because they're getting a massive check, you know? But again, they're just playing a role. But then you also have, like, big things like this. Like, how often do you see celebrities talking about child sex trafficking and trying to stop that? Yeah. Almost never. Yeah, never. You hear, and how famous is Ashton Kutcher right now? How many movies or TV shows is he in currently? None. How much? None. Because he's actually doing something right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's wild to me, I'm just pointing this out, that when an actor, actress is actually doing something that's good for the world, they are in a lot less movies and TV shows. A and I don't less, necessarily think it's limelight. because they're not trying to. <clears throat> I think they're just not getting as many roles because those people in power in those dirty, dirty places like Hollywood know that they can't bend them to their will as much yeah. anymore. Yep. So the, what do they do? They're like, well, I'll find some other hot young person that we can tell to do whatever, and they'll just do it. Mm-hmm. I know another one I heard of is Sean Penn. Fantastic actor, Academy Award winner, incredible. You hardly see him in anything anymore, and it's the same thing. He's got like major charity work and everything that he does. Not like, chi- not like bringing attention to child trafficking things like that, but his charity work is genuine. He does a lot. Oh, you know what though? Ashton Kutcher was just in that uh, sitcom, The Ranch. The Ranch. Well, yeah, but, but I, I mean, mean like, that wasn't as far popular. As, yeah, as like. No, no big name movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like the like, dude was a blockbuster. I guarantee hit. there was no, not a single commercial about that show unless you were on Netflix. Yeah. Right. Mm. And even then only if it was stuff that like lined up with it. Yeah. Huh. It's weird, dude. It's a weird, weird, weird day to live. It's interesting. Like there's I'm a lot so- of the control of information <laughs> as we see in history, even the control of information is what who who keep what keeps people in power. Yeah. Well, and you like you said uh, very early in the podcast, history is written by the victorious. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like uh, oh, that's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I would I I always tease that it's like like I don't want this to sound 
sick, but it's like, I can't wait to die. <laughs> I, know, I know, it sounds terrible to start it out that way. But it, it's like, I can't wait to die, to go to heaven and get all the answers and to be able to look back and just be like, oh my gosh. Be like, like, I knew they were playing for Satan. I knew it. <laughs> you wake up and you're in the metaverse and, and Mark Zuckerberg is... Is your god? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is <laughs> with the a knife worst in his nightmare. Hand. Yeah. Oh my god. He's got those crazy, lifeless eyes Dude, just, we're just staring I, at you. I, I just think we're He's gonna see people. Person. We're gonna see some people be like, "Oh dang, he was a good one." Huh? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what that what Danny you, DeVito? Really? <laughs> what are you doing up here? <laughs> How did you get here? <laughs> <laughs> well, think, do I mean, it's kind of funny to think about that, though, like, because how again, how many people are really good people, but because they don't want you to listen to them, they, you know, Spread destroy the rumors their name. or yeah, Just, exactly. Right. Sadly, that that happens even on our level. Oh, you yeah. Know? It doesn't have to be celebrity level, uh -huh. even just our level. Yep. Yeah. What'd your wife say about me? What, what's going on? <laughs> what she's trying to sabotage? She builds you up. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> good. Thank you, Jenny. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's uh, crazy. The world's a wild place. Anything else? Any other weird? Let's see here. Dark history. Know, a lot of them are just talking about like <laughs> torturous things. Not so much. Pretty dark. I mean, that's pretty dark. It's <laughs> pretty messed up. <laughs> right. Um, oh where was the one I was just reading? Um. Okay, here's one. So it says, don't know if anyone know or has said that. Okay, let's see. The Russian Army of the Dead always sticks in my mind. So a short story, German, German wanted Russia, wanted a Russian stronghold, used chemical warfare to draw out the Russians. Um, quick and easy, right? Except that... Instead of surrendering, the Russians charged full force at the Germans, Germans while they bled from their eyes and their organs melted. Scared the Germans so badly they stayed away for months. Huh. So basically, the Germans yeah, used chemical warfare to try and get the Russians out of this place. But instead of surrendering, the Russians still charged them. themselves yeah charged them full Hold force line. while their body was melting from the oh inside that's goodness. why you don't mess with russia yeah. <laughs> don't mess with mother russia <laughs> we come at you even if we were microwaved <laughs> and then we go to discotheque <laughs> <laughs> russia man that's a <laughs> wild place suits, dude russia where our women look like men so. It's not true. <laughs> it's not actually. No, no. it's just a more propaganda because they don't want us taking their women. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played. You guys did it. That was good. Uh, That's there's a torture device from the olden days called the pair of anguish. That was essentially the size of a large pair or a grenade that fit into a person's mouth. Your torturer would then turn the mechanism on this device, which would, would turn, oh, would turn a mechanism on this device that would expand the pair in size. Needless and unfortunately to say it would break or dislocate the person's jaw this mu you mutilating the person if not killing them oh, gosh it's like that uh that that video you sent us right the, that thing in the, the toilet, toilet. <laughs> dude he'll never be constipated <clears throat> again here's one for you um when do you think that was the last time that the guillotine was used for capital punishment guillotine Ooh. yeah I mean, I mean, if you weren't asking the question, which makes me feel like it's far more recent than I would ever guess. That, yeah, that's where I'm French at. Revolution. I would say like 1700s. But you've got me thinking it's been like in the last 50 years. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> late 1800s. 2020. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say 1800s. 19... 
77. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Dude, what happened in the 70s? <laughs> dude, seriously. The 70s were effed up, dude. <laughs> no, like from previous podcasts that we've done and everything, so much happened in the 70s. The 70s yeah. were dark. It's all so over weird the world. Because like all you hear about is hippies and love, love and yeah. prosper and like... It's they chill, were the answer man. to all the psychoticness that Good happened. Heck. Huh. Yeah. Or they were just on drugs and didn't realize what was actually Half happening. Half of the world was just baked. Yeah, dude. I'm having Crazy. an ultra, ultra, what was it? MK Ultra. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. Everyone was <clears throat> doped up. Yep. It's all that LCD. I'm having LCD. a brain flash. Wasn't it a guy who, who could request his, his, execution and chose to be taken out by a gay team? Uh, I don't know for sure. Let me see. I mean, that could be There's really... There's supposedly a video. That could be really BA. No way. I mean... That's just what one of the comments I say says. no way, but like, if you've searched, you can find some pretty messed From up the stuff. 70s, maybe. Well, yeah. I think it hadn't been fully, like they hadn't been using it, but it hadn't been taken out of the law as a form of Execution. I think he found like a backlog, and that's what he wanted. And he it. chose. He that. chose. That. I mean, Dude, there's got to be some be real way weird to go. deep laws in there. I but. think so. You think it'd be fast? Like it sounds obviously fast. I mean, your head's getting chopped off by a giant blade, but well, your brain, your wa- blood's flowing out. You're gonna lose blood very or oxygen I've just, very quickly. I've just heard that it's almost like the same like chicken with a head with its head cut off. I've heard that. Your body is still reacting to the pain. Well, your body is, but your brain's not. Yeah, your yeah, brain. You're not you're being receptive to it. It's like you just pass out. Would yeah. be. I don't know. I mean, Ugh. I clearly don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we're spitballing, but I. Would it's think. open for speculation. It's like getting choked <laughs> out, I guess. Only you don't have a body anymore. Did you know Genghis Khan killed twenty percent of the world's population? Yeah, I've heard that. No way. Yeah. He would also intentionally marry his daughters to leaders of other territories. He'd then send his son-in-laws, those leaders, into battle, leaving his daughters to rule the territories in their stead. The son-in-laws would most likely die in battle, leaving his daughters as the then rulers of the territories. I mean, that's pretty genius. Also, that's how he took over a lot of... <clears throat> Jeez. Lot how of many that. daughters did he have? A lot. He had a a lot. over 100 wives. What? Good. Heck. I yeah. mean, wives is a loose wild, term. Dude. I, th- I think it might be multi hundreds, but I'm not sure. Reminds me of that new girl. He's like, You got one wife. <laughs> you can't have both. You got one wife. Yep. Why? <laughs> Dude, I, I, every time you now, just marry a bunch of wives. <laughs> come to Utah. No. When I watch New Girl and mm-hmm. I see him, Nick Miller, all I think about is a very young Trump. Like the way he talks yeah. and his mannerisms <laughs> is definitely a young Trump oh man. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's funny. New girl. <clears throat> Never seen it. That's crazy. Oh man. That was. This <laughs> one's <laughs> funny, but it's not. Okay. But it is. And okay. You'll probably see why. In the old age of Scandinavia, newborn babies with red hair. <laughs> Got burned alive in the bonfire <laughs> with the belief that they were witches. <laughs> Why are we laughing at that? Why? Just because Zach's not here. I know. <laughs> I feel like we should laugh at it if he was here. It's. I'm not. Gonna, it's not funny, but it's funny, but it's not. But you get it. The, con- <laughs> the context is funny. The reality They're is witches. Not. So <laughs> just start calling Zach a witch. He's a witch. (laughs) Listen here, witch. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's going to happen. I had something back on the the death penalty, but man, I can't remember now. (coughs) Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. What? I don't know. I'm just making random noises. Dude, history is just a weird. Place. That's, all, that's, yeah. that's like when you start getting making those old man noises. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, re- I've read this before. So the world almost ended in September 26, 1983. In the early hours, in the early hours of the morning, the Soviet Union's early warning systems detected an incoming missile strike from the United States. 
Computer readouts suggested several missiles had been launched. The protocol for the Soviet military would have been to retaliate with a nuclear attack of its own, but duty officer Stanislav Petrov, whose job it was to register apparent enemy missile launches, decided not to report them to his superiors and instead dismissed them as a false alarm. Were they real? No, we did no. not shoot no. missiles. No, no so. but it makes you wonder if it was like some deep well, trying to start something. Because there, there is conspiracy. I think we've talked about this during the Cold War yeah. where Russia sent, so the Spetsnaz infiltrated one of their own subs mm. and took it out down in the South Pacific and they re-registered their like signal as a Chinese boat a Chinese sub and they were going to shoot a like launch nukes from that boat onto to the US basically sparking a war between us and China to which Russia could then just come in and like take over because we'd be depleted and stuff well the the Russian commander of that sub realized what they were trying to do and he actually ignited one of the missiles in its tube without launching it to scuttle the ship and kill everyone yeah, I remember. I think you talked about that in a previous podcast. That's, mm-hmm. that's a conspiracy. Conspiracy or is it's, that? A, it's a pretty <laughs> factually accurate. The conspiracy is like the like what their intentions were. Uh, like we have the fact that it happened. There is the ship. They tried to recover it, mm. and and so this is what they assume happened. But uh, it did have the. It was a Russian sub. It did have the call sign of a of a Chinese boat, and it did. It was sunk because one of its missiles went off in its tube and they didn't the release mechanism he didn't uh, Mm -hmm. so they think though it was a row like a rogue group of the government that was trying to do something so uh, it wasn't like all of russian government it was just uh, this rogue group like radical Mm -hmm. group exactly so that being said though it could be a, a, a move, a play by the same type of group huh. trying to initiate something. Jeez. What Can if? you imagine? So I always go off the one like this guy to, for to think, basically like, not doing his job. Right? Is that guy just sitting like pissing his pants? <laughs> like he's like, this, this is it. This could be the end. Or, or is like, it divine intervention? Right? Yeah. No, for real. Shh. Because yeah, where, man. what was that other, I don't remember the, not too long ago, just a few years ago, there was that, that early warning missile message that went out to everybody's phones in Hawaii. Oh, I, I remember. It was oh, a total yeah. accident yeah. and people freaked out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our, we had friends over there. Mm-hmm. Bryce and Nelly. Yeah. Yeah. They were over there and they were like, oh, this is uh, it. <laughs> Day. Like yeah. what do you do? What do you I can't like, swim that fast. You're all, you're landlocked or you're wait, water locked and nowhere to go except for your tiki hut. Yeah. And that ain't gonna stop it. <laughs> <laughs> the big crazy. bad wolf taught me like, anything. <laughs> I remember when that happened and like I just tried to put myself in their shoes and it's like because they had a kid at that point. They had a they had their daughter. Oh, and I was like, gosh. man, I don't know what I would do. Like you just there's nothing you can do. Yeah. It's like terrifying. my dad says, you just stick your head between your legs and kiss your butt, but goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> well, Vietnam too has started over a fault. We were trying to go to war with them over the communist regime or whatever in there, and everybody was not doing it. And then they ended up, they, uh, they made up a, like a, a sunk ship or something. You should look it up. Um, Shoot. I'm going to butcher it, too. That's why I don't like saying things. <laughs> it's weird because you're part of a podcast. I know, right? So It's like you have to say things. I know. I have to do things. Um, Interesting. But <laughs> Vietnam was started over a... a it was a, a made-up, fabricated incident saying that Vietnam sunk one of our ships. And that's what made oh, us that's finally... Right. I remember what you're talking that's about. That's what made us finally pull the trigger to go to war with them. And essentially, wasn't it like we sank the ship... And then uh, blamed them for it. Yes. Yep. And then we ended up losing that war. Right? And nobody and won that thing. war. That's the oh, thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, was, that, that war was jacked up. Yeah. So I here's, that was here's a question. Worst. What do you think will be the effed up history in our future? Like, what do you think? 
Like, I, I know the obvious one that we're all thinking of, right? Like COVID. Okay. Like the masks are is effective. It, is it the culling of the herd? Is it, uh, are, are they trying to weaken us? You know, I don't know, but I'm thinking more so like in the future, you got these like false signals, right? Being yeah. like deep fakes are definitely a thing right now. You've got deep what? Deep fakes. What's that? We, we basically, talked about that in our metaverse <clears throat> one. Oh. Basically, you have the ability to put someone's face on your face through virtual. Oh, jeez. Like CGI. I think just yeah. CGI. Yeah, CGI like, but it's easy. Remember, so remember in Fast 7, when, uh, when Paul Walker died okay. and they had his brother stand in. Uh-huh. So his brother was acting, but then they CGI'd Paul Walker's face on it. It's that technology, but now like in real in life. the hands of everyday people. It's like in the yeah. movie Total Recall. But Have you seen that where they can change their face? The technology yeah. is so much better now with it too. Yeah. Well, like and like Cam said, it's in the hands of anyone who really truly wants it. Like there is a guy on TikTok. His handle I think is something like Deep Fake Tom. Yeah, it's his whole channel is based on him deep faking Tom Cruise's face and pretending to be him. Oh, deep geez. fake, deep fake Tom Cruise or something like mm-hmm. that. And it looks like I've the first we, time I, I saw it, we have the eyes to see it, that it's a fake. But if you are unsuspecting and huh. you didn't know what you were looking at, you would think you it's, were watching Tom Cruise. It's like Crazy. one of those things where you watch it and you're like, you, you feel something's not right. <laughs> yeah. But your eyes aren't telling you it's not right. But you're like, something's not yeah. right. Huh. But he has the exact same mannerisms, the exact same vocal, like, speech. Mm-hmm. And he's got it nailed down. And his entire account is about him deep faking. Huh. It's all Tom videos Cruise. of Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Jeez. And it's scary accurate. It's... So I'll like, have to look it up. you put this stuff into the hands of professionals. What's to stop someone from sending a deep fake video of Joe Biden L- launching a nuclear attack? Not, I mean, just declaring war. Yeah. Doesn't even have to be just the simple, like my fellow <laughs> Americans were yeah, blah, 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 whatever. I mean, well, there'd uh, probably be a lot more stammering and a lot more like talking of hair and petting of heads. So, you know, you know the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> 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 my fellow Americans and the go- the corn pop. Listen, fat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, but what's Man. to stop that? Like, is that mm-hmm. something we're gonna witness in our lives? Yeah, in the next ten years, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, uh, like, well, that's uh, like <clears throat> we kind of talked about it. That letter from the White House. <laughs> Basically saying Merry Christmas to everybody who's vaccinated and go to hell, whoever you're yeah. not vaccinated. No. I mean, that that uh, right there deserves to be right in the oh stupid history of Is America. that a real thing? Yes. That's a yeah, real dude, thing. It's a that's real a thing. Document. But that's going to, that was, that's my point is what if, again, kind of like the fake missile attack, but a lot more subtle. What if somebody wrote it to specifically light a fire? I don't know if the fire's burning from this letter or not but i mean what if somebody put it because it's like oh this is gonna piss a lot of people off and they did it on purpose huh it's been authenticated though so i mean but what government's going to hey, <coughs> did you guys really do this did you guys really say you're gonna nuke us oh you didn't okay we're good then oh are we good what what do you mean that's not real you're <laughs> yeah, not actually yeah shooting but for real us, though right? for real for like, reals like, did you uh <laughs> oh okay you know what i mean no they're just gonna be like Fire the missiles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's crazy though. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh. It's scary. I feel like I feel like multiple countries right now are itching to push that nuke button. Like they're just like are luckily they, there's only like I don't five. think so. Because <laughs> well. you just you you hit that button, there's no coming back, and it's just gonna be I get yeah, I I, I fire and brimstone. Hey, real I quick. Actually, oh. Cam, can you look up that what the letter said that from the White House? Because we have a lot mm-hmm. of international uh, listeners, so I would love for them to know what our White House sent out as a season's greetings to all Americans. This is not a joke. <clears throat> this is not a joke. This is for real. I mean, he's a joke, but this isn't a joke. Well, this is just ridiculous. Gosh. Real quick, while you look that up on the thing of nukes, um, 
I I watched this thing. I want to say it was on the History Channel, and it was like the top ten ways that could um, cause an apocalypse. Mm. And one of them was nuclear war, and it said it would only take eight nuclear bombs going off, which maybe is a lot, but in my head it doesn't sound like a lot. It it would only take eight to destroy the world. It would put enough radiation into the world that the, it would not recover. You'd have nuclear winter. You'd have yep. uh, yeah. you walk out the sun. The whole earth would freeze. Yeah. I was like, I don't. Eight. That's I don't, crazy to I don't me. I don't know if that's lot. right. Yeah. I don't know if that's right. What depends? Eight. There's different. Eight categories nukes? of nukes, yeah. Though. I mean, as far as nukes go, you've like got eight. different megatons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and like, because you yeah. have my dad used to work on <laughs> a Minuteman <laughs> missile, and those of you that don't know the Minuteman missile, I think it carried three nukes. Hmm. I can't recall. Which Either one? way, the Minuteman, <clears throat> because I basically, they, I think now uh, we can't talk about, about that. Five or six. Maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah. It was an insane amount. Yeah. It was like five mm -hmm. or six. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It was it's, war, it's just the warhead. Yeah. And so the. Uh, but yeah, the Miniman missile, basically the premise is, is it can hit anywhere in the world within mm -hmm. a minute because it basically skyrockets out to our outer space and then goes from there. I don't think it's that it could get there in a minute. It's that could, it could be launched within a minute. Like we, if, if needs be like we have to launch it, it's ready to go that we could launch it almost immediately. It's still going to take some time to get there, but like we yeah. could launch them immediately. See, I thought it was like hitting targets within 60 seconds. Because they, we well, have about 500 of them. Let's call the Minutemen because the, back in the revolution, the Minutemen were. They were the ones who were ready to fight. <clears> yeah, they were, they were the, the, the militia, the militia yeah. groups that were ready to get together and fight within a minute. So yeah, that's what's named after. But I don't know, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, they do travel. Nuclear warheads to well, me are more of a deterrent. Like yeah. it's just saying, hey. You've got that. Look what we've got. I've got a big okay. stick. You've got a big stick. Yeah. Let's and leave I, each I other honestly, the alone. And there's only there's only nine countries that actually have nukes. Yeah. Because of all the treaties and stuff and promises. I think we're actually past the point of any kind of nuclear yeah. war. We're now in the war and we're seeing it today of finance information. <laughs> of esports. <laughs> it's a war of information. Information and, and a infrastructure. war of economy. Like it'd be infrastructure. Like if, if China <laughs> wanted to destroy us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it like one of the best ways would be to weaken our society, which that could be, I don't know, a freaking disease. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also weakening uh, the trust in institutions, getting in yeah. and like you literally like think like, of like Evergrande. Think, oh. <laughs> I don't know what that is. What is you that? You don't know what Evergrande is. No, but I'm going to look it up. No, do it. Oh my goodness. It'd be a combination of the two, maybe. It'd be technology See? warfare, is what it would be. Infrastructure, but, uh, but also like, like if we wanted to, if we wanted to like push out someone in the group, I'll say Tony just because you're across from me. That's the only <laughs> reason. So I could go to Chris and be like, Dude, so Tony, like, he thinks you're like you have chicken legs. <laughs> right, and, and then we I all know to, that that's true. I could go to Austin and say something different, and like, gonna I can be like, verify. "Hey, Tony, like they think this about you." Like I could create dissension yes. among you, uh -huh. just yeah. make you question loyalty and trust and all that stuff. Like we see that happening in our media yeah. constantly. Yeah, and it's so every easy. dang day. It's so easy. But you, see, then I just be like, Chris. You said I got chicken legs. <laughs> like my bad. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's because we're You're real right. humans. I need to hit leg Dave harder. Yeah. But I mean, we're seeing it from our own freaking <clears throat> White House, our own government right now. Well, everybody's scared. Well, that's part of the whole. Everybody's offended by everything. Like he can't. If you have a concern about something, they're well, they're literally tell creating else instead of the person a division between offended. vaccinated and unvaccinated people. So hmm. going back to this White House. I think they're making a bigger deal than what is actually going on in this country. No, though. exactly. That's the thing, though, is like here, right in their own document that they sent out for or for the holidays. This is just a little excerpt from it. There's more. But it says we are intent on not letting Omicron disrupt work and school for the vaccinated. You've done the right thing and we will get through this for the unvaccinated. You are looking at a winter of severe illness and death. For yourselves, your families, and the hospitals you may soon overwhelm. Wow, thanks, White House. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, unless you know, you're unvaccinated. If you! I mean, wow. call me crazy. And don't get me wrong, I'm not crazy? playing either side. Yeah. Like, people, like, it's funny because if you 
Joe, if you bash Biden, it's like you're for Trump. It's like, okay, no, I wasn't for <laughs> either. Yeah. It's just who was elected. Yeah. But a lot of hatred for Trump came <clears throat> on the premise that he was trying to, what? Divide the country? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we've got a White House dividing a country. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and, and didn't it, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of these Democrats and stuff didn't want to get vaccinated while Trump was in office? Uh, I'll it's die first before I get vaccinated. Very interesting. And now before Trump's out of Trump's office. Vaccine. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not taking Trump's vaccine. How dare you not take the vaccine, you plague rat? Like, <laughs> it's crazy. You murderer. You grandma murderer. When the facts are, if you've had it, your immune system is 16 to 17 times higher from natural yeah, immunity. You have natural immunity. Demonetized. I'm sorry, but Who has, it's the truth. You truce. have immunity. And you have immunity. You have immunity. I do. I do. I got the Should golden give it ticket. Like, give it an out like Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Don't catch the Omicron. It might be a slight cold. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, as far as COVID goes, that was no freaking joke. Dude. No, it sucked. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. That wrecked my life for two and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. Holy <clears throat> crap, did it suck. It did suck. Oh, my God. Almost gosh. like it was made in a lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just oh, got, my God. To, to, Canceled. To be completely honest, though. Yeah. It did not, like, if you have not had COVID, it does not feel normal no it feels manufactured because it does not hit you like a normal cold it doesn't like nothing about it feels normal or like on a time release it is it's like (laughs) on a time release it it hits you in the weirdest ways in ways that you've never experienced Uh it's i don't it feels dirt it feels filthy yeah like being sick sucks yeah I don't know how to explain it. If Tony's you haven't had like, it, it's hard up, to shut explain. Up. <laughs> oh, I, we were there. Actually, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't relate. I mean, I I had it, but mine mm. was as mild as it can be. The only thing that happened to me was I lost my smell. Mm. So wild. But even that's weird. It, yeah, oh, it's how it weird. affects everybody way differently. Yeah. 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 I mean, it hit me and Jess ridiculously hard. I think yeah. that's what's weird is what you just said. It affects everybody so differently. You're you're cold. Everybody on earth knows what oh, yeah. a cold feels like. Yeah. yeah. You start describing your symptoms like, oh, you got a cold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been going around. <laughs> <laughs> my big toe went numb. COVID. You have COVID. <laughs> Bro, like, like, my you, kid- got all, you got all Megatron <laughs> there, buddy. Well, like, <laughs> there's symptoms. Like, but Lisa got severe symptoms in other areas, and I got se- severe symptoms. So hers was congestion, but mine was body aches. And uh, just fatigue, and I did have the fever. I had a fever for five to seven days straight, like just crazy, and it'd spike, and then I'd have to bring it down with medication and then spike. She had the fever too, so we had similarities, but hers was her kidneys were killing her, and then all of a sudden her congestion. And that fatigue, I'm just barely getting over the fatigue of it all. Yeah, dude, same. I My, my nose still isn't what it used to be. Same. Yeah. It's crazy, yeah. like it... Has to be a really potent fart for me to smell it. It's weird. <laughs> for real. <laughs> it's well, crazy. And but like to give you another prime example, Jess is one of the healthiest people I know. It hit her harder than it well, yeah. it hit her harder than it hit me in certain aspects. Yeah. Like she's still having trouble breathing, mm-hmm. which is crazy to me. The girl could run like a marathon tomorrow if she wanted. Yeah. And for my mom, who just got done beating breast cancer, going through chemotherapy, got it and got the sniffles. <laughs> and you're like, out of all of us, I think, I mean, well, what if that's it? And the, she's older. Yeah. yeah like, what if that's it? The more unhealthy you are, the less it affects you. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Thank> good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I only lost my smell. Oh, it's like you're not worth it, dude. It kicked me in the dick. I was hard. It was a hard it, kick. It, kicked I, you so hard, knocked your air freshener off. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make those. We gotta make those. We're gonna, we're gonna make them. We're gonna throw them. Spencer's on our- here. We come. Yep. Five is crowd in your pants. <laughs> yes yep. I like it Yep We each come up with our own fragrance We'll have five fragrances Oh my gosh 
Mine will be Dingleberry. Check Mine out last be, week if you're lost. <laughs> Mine would be I, ma- Majestic Mahogany. <laughs> oh, got to get that hardwood. Hard, hardwood, <laughs> dude. Got to get that cedar. <laughs> yes. Or pine. Now, what do they make? What do they make uh, baseball bats out of? Hickory. Hickory. <laughs> yeah, hickory. I don't, I don't know, actually. I don't, want my, I don't want to smell like sausage. It'd be a little weird. Hickory. Hmm. It's hickory naughty. smoked sausage. Naughty hickory, because hickory is Hickory no smoked. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my goodness. But who knows? Only time will tell how the world sees the history of what's going on right oh, now. Seafoam. <laughs> seafoam. Does it even have a smell? I don't know. I'm sure it smells Loose like the ocean. Make it up. What's your loofah smell like? That's seafoam. There you go. Is it? Oh, it's, it's a, foamy. It's that's a sea sponge. No, mine's not a sponge. Oh, you have an actual like sponge? I just sponge. I don't call that a loofah. A loofah is a s- no. no it's, it's the, the fluffy it's, thing. Yeah, it's a fluffy plas- with the string plastic that they make mesh out of, and then they well, bunch they, it together. I thought basically anything. It's literally like a, a meshy ribbon that okay, somebody well, tied a knot on with a little. You white can thing. buy legitimate sea sponge. Yeah. Yes. As a yes, as a can. scrubber yeah. for in it's the a, shower. It's but a, they what do they call it? That a sea sponge. A sponge. Sponge. A bath uh, sponge. Let's argue the semantics <laughs> of a loofah. Of a loofah. That's different Holy than a hell. We are like <laughs> all over the place. Hey, you the know place. what, guys? It's like well, 1 a.m. Well, we made it to the end. Uh, it's now Christmas Eve morning. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. Merry Christmas Eve. Yeah, filthy all you guys, animals. Honestly. I am so tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we got to do family stuff today, guys. <laughs> and like, and be, ready for Christmas. I'd be so merry and happy <laughs> and chipper. <laughs> I still got to work in the morning. You got work what? in the morning? Yeah. Oh, be all right. dang. I didn't know this. <laughs> they worked at a bank. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're close this? Christmas Day, not no. Christmas Eve. We, I think we should get three days off. Just I don't know if I have to work. I told it's everybody. Hey, you. hey no, I saw, I saw something that might go in great. Then it, the Senate is trying to pass a three-day weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A four-day work week. I saw that, and I was Fantastic. like... Fantastic. F, yeah. If that goes through, I'm joining the freaking workforce. Heck yeah, dude. As long as my paychecks you, don't change. Did you ever see... There's a there's like a TikTok or something going around, and it's like... It's this guy, and he's like, I used to work in 95, but I wanted to pursue uh, my dream that and I become an that. entrepreneur, so I started my own business. He's like, and now I work 24-7. Five! <laughs> <laughs> Dude. No, no, it's like, he's like, so now I work 24 7. And then it just shows him walk across the screen in the background. He's like, fuck. <laughs> Dude. Dude. It's well, true. Get away from the nine to five. It's, true. it's so true. Yeah. It's so, I work so much. I know. It's stupid. Oh, a, man. Anyway. But, but hey, you know, one day we'll but be able hey. to look back at this podcast a few years from now. Yeah. And we'll be able to see how history, you know, told the story. And if we, the right uh, side of history. we were right. Yeah. I hope so. I love Time making fun of our presidents. They're great. Gosh. All of them. Every all single of them. one. All of them. They all just They're suck, such prizes. Man. Except Kennedy. That's no, what I go I back know. to it. You have Trump, and then you got Biden, and you're just like, this is Here's the best the America has to offer. Here's the problem is it's, yeah, that's the best of the ones who want to do it. Uh, that's the ticker. Is it's like, how do we just not go find it. one? Where do we find the it's guy a, that was Independence Day? It's a popularity <laughs> contest. Where do we find that guy? Washington died. Let's just, uh, <laughs> let's just, I vote Chris Pratt. Like, like yeah, think about it. Stud. Here's the thing. When Washington became the first president of the country, he didn't want to be president. No. no, he did not. We so gotta find that guy. We need to find the guy that doesn't want to be president. Joe I, Rogan for president and peer pressure wanna, him yeah, into yeah, doing it. Joe I mean, Rogan. Then he'll just send weed to everybody. <laughs> anyway. I don't, I don't want to be president. That's nope. for dang no, sure. No, absolutely so, not. But like legitimately, please don't. Yeah, <laughs> legit. I'm too lazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No. I did no. I don't know the first thing about it. I, no, maybe that's what they need though. Maybe they need a sacrificial lamb up there. What they say? Pirates a, a of the people, Caribbean. A, um, I. Decline your I acquiesce your or whatever. I decline oh, yeah. to act act to create your acquiesce. Acquiesce uh-huh. your request. <laughs> Means no. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's and with like that, guidelines. we'll let you guys go. Thanks for hanging out with us. We hope you had a good time. Oh, it's hope been a you had wild some, ride. Found some interesting history. If you got some of your own weird facts, go ahead and throw them in, in the yeah. comments. Let us read them. We're not huge history buffs, but we hope you enjoyed this episode. Yeah. But uh thanks for being here, guys. Next time. 
our, our little ginger will return home. Yes. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all you filthy animals out Hope there. Hope it was a Merry Christmas, because it'll be long after. Right. Yeah, this yeah. is like mid-January. <laughs> yeah. Happy New Year. Happy yeah, belated well, yeah. Christmas. Hope Merry, New Year's going great. <laughs> Merry Christmas a month ago, you yeah. filthy animal. And a Happy New Year. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us here in this crowd. We love, love you guys. You. Thanks Adios. for being part of this crowd. Bye. Bye.